Hi, I'm Ben Hedges, and welcome to Discovering China. Today, we will be exploring the lush flavors of Chinese cuisine and two famous figures from Chinese history. We talk with celebrity chefs about NTD's upcoming Chinese culinary competition. Margaret Tri brings us the story of Mulan, and I take a look at the moving poetry of Li Bai. On September 27th and 28th, NTD Television will hold its fifth international Chinese culinary competition on Times Square in New York. The competition has been creating a buzz in New York's food community. We now talk with two celebrity chefs about their expectations for the contest. For the past four years, NTD Television has held its international Chinese culinary competition in New York. The most recent two competitions have been held on Times Square. The competition has created a buzz in New York's food community. Celebrity chef Julieta Ballesteros thinks New York is the ideal place for such a competition. I think this is、uh, an excellent idea. You know, especially here in New York, that、um, there's it's a melting pot of all of the cultures, and especially one of the most、um, important cultures here in New York is the Chinese. Malcolm Mitchell is a Food Network star finalist and has cooked for celebrities such as NBA athlete Antoine Jameson and movie star Chris Tucker. Mitchell commends NTD's organization of the culinary competition. I personally like the way that you guys are setting up the competition because it's not about all the fanciness. It's not about、um, the presentation. It's really about understanding the food, understanding the culture, and the taste and the flavor of the food. NTD's competition seeks to revive the essence of traditional Chinese cooking. It is very important not to like lose the traditions and the real ingredients and the real elements. How do you create、uh, Chinese food? I think it is very important for every country not to lose their origins and their originality and and their essence in 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 everything, especially in food. Mitchell and Ballesteros will join three other celebrity chefs to partake in the Fire Up the Wok challenge on the first night of the competition. They will have to compete cooking a traditional Chinese dish. This is a good、uh, place for me to be in this competition to kind of do a little research, do a little background, get educated and knowledge, and find out what true Chinese food is. This year, money raised at the competition will be donated to a Chinese culinary scholarship for the underprivileged. Ancient Chinese history is full of tales of exemplary women whose names are associated with courage, loyalty, and filial piety. Yet there's one legendary Chinese female warrior whose name is now immortalized as the Walt Disney heroine Hua Mulan. Margaret Tri now brings us the story of this classic Chinese character. The legend of Hua Mulan originated from a Chinese poem, The Ballad of Mulan. The poem was written during the Northern Wei Dynasty, from 386 to 534, when nomadic invaders ruled northern China. This is a long narrative poem from an ancient collection of Chinese songs and ballads called Yue Fu. During the late Ming Dynasty, a writer Shi Wei developed the story of Mulan into a book. The story was later retold in a play during the Qing Dynasty. The storyline of Mulan is about a devoted daughter who disguised herself as a man to take her aging father's place to fight for her country. It depicts traditional Chinese virtues of courage, loyalty, and filial piety. In the poem. The story begins with the emperor calling on the army in an emergency to defend the country from invaders. Mulan's father did not want to defy the emperor's decree. He wanted to fight, but he was too old. Seeing her father's dilemma, Mulan asked him to let her join the army in his place. With his blessing, Mulan joined the army, disguised as a man. She fought for more than ten years. And led the troops to victory before returning to look after her ailing father. When the emperor came to commend the soldier for his brave service, he found out the truth. 
This popular legend has inspired books, film and stage adaptations. Some of the films include the 1939 film Mulan Joins the Army and the 1964 Shaw Brothers musical film called Lady General Hua Mulan. It was Maxine Hong Kingston's adaptations in her 1975 novel that popularized the legion in the West and led to the making of the 1998 animated Walt Disney movie. But the Disney version has many deviations from the original tale. New York-based Shen Yun Performing Arts offers one of the most authentic representations of the Legion of Mulan. In its Chinese classical dance drama, Mulan Joins the Battle, Shen Yun Performing Arts tells the story of a girl who fulfills the twin Confucian duties of loyalty to one's parents and service to one's country. The values at the very heart of the Mulan story. The Tang Dynasty is considered the golden age of Chinese civilization. This holds true for the field of poetry. One of the key figures in this golden age of poetry was Li Bai. Li was known for his romantic style of writing and has come to be called the immortal poet. Li lived from 701 to 762 AD, spending much of his time traveling around China. He served briefly as a poet at the Hanlin Academy in the capital city of Chang'an at the request of Emperor Xuanzong. Li did have one habit that some viewed as a defect. He drank, and drank a lot. Yet when it came to writing poetry, drinking may have been the activity that made Li Bai's poetry so evocative and moving. One story records Emperor Xuanzong summoning Li Bai while he was having a feast with his favorite consort, Yang Guifei. Li turned up drunk. Court attendants splashed him with water to sober him up, but to no avail. However, once handed a writing brush, Li spontaneously composed three songs praising the beauty of Yang Guifei. The emperor was so moved, he personally accompanied Li on the flute. Palace life didn't last long for Li Bai, however. After three years serving the emperor, a jealous eunuch convinced Yang Guifei that Li had been disrespectful towards her in one of his poems. Li was ousted and took to traveling the empire again. Much of Li's poetry alludes to this time spent on his solitary travels, often drinking alone with only the moon for company. Amidst the flowers with a pot of wine, drinking alone without a companion, raising the wine cup and toasting the moon, facing my shadow, we have become three people. The moon appears frequently in Tang Dynasty poetry, and the moon Li Bai describes is a bright moon high in the sky in keeping with his romantic style. The moon becomes a symbol of permanence in the ever-changing world, reminding the poet of people and places dear to him. I raise my head and gaze at the bright moon. I hang my head and think of my hometown. In another poem, Lee wrote, The people of today cannot see the moon of ancient times, but today's moon once shone upon the ancients. Although Li Bai has now been gone for well over a millennium, his poetic descriptions of dreamlike landscapes illuminated by the moon have left a legacy in the hearts of the Chinese people. And Li may not be as far away as you think. After all, the same moon that shines upon you today once shone down upon the immortal poet. That's all we have time for this week, but you can check out one of NTD's other China-related shows right here. Off the Great Wall covers sensational, funny, and absurd China-related topical issues. Alina Wang will be back next week with more on NTD's Chinese culinary competition and one of China's traditional musical instruments. But for now, I'm Ben Hedges, and you've been watching Discovering China.